Okay, welcome to the second fluke catch and cook of 2018. Here's my cousin's point of view. You're seeing his point of view because I failed to catch a keeper in my rod review trip. Over 20 shorts and no keepers. He's been averaging about 1.5, 1.6 keepers every time he goes from shore. So that is pretty impressive. Um, he's nice enough to donate both the footage and the fish to our catch and cook efforts. Anyway, he's using the Daiwa Lebra 9 foot medium surf rod. This rod weighs about 4.5 ounces. He has it paired up to a Daiwa Ballistic LT 4000, 15 pound Daiwa J Braid to 15 pound Cigar STS Floral Leader. He's using a half ounce decoy jig head and five inch gulp grub in nuclear chicken. And as usual, he's popping the jig up. He's holding it there and letting the jig swing towards him and also sideways in the current. And almost 100% of his hits are while the jig is swinging down back towards the bottom. He's fishing on the edge of a pretty steep drop off, so if you notice that fight, even though it's from shore, it was sort of vertical. And yeah, this is one of two keepers he caught that day, but this is the one we ended up roasting. So this fish taped out to a little over 21, and of course the social media pictures there's the gulp grub and he's going to take quite some time bleeding this fish out on the beach and as usual the cooking part will be live commentary here is the food you caught yeah i caught it that's, that's right i mean i i i have not caught a keeper last time i went out oh you kept it nice yeah um all right so basically scaled i trimmed the fins off and we're leaving the eyeballs in today because uh, we're not going to fry it and that's fine. And then I just make cuts all the way down to the bone. And then we're going to slather sauce in, in between these cuts. And this is only the dark side, the white side. The dark even... side and the white side wow. is gone. And this way your cooking time is reduced. Normally, if you roast the fluke, you know, most fish I like to stand like this on his stomach to roast. So you get even browning on both sides. But a fluke, you can't really do that. So if you roast the whole fluke, the white side gets no sauce, it gets no char, it gets no flavor. And it's basically just wasted. It's just like a mushy, uh, half steam type of fish. So the white side is another catch and cook episode and the, the black side is really what we're eating so what we're going to do is um make a little bed of lime slices by the way i scaled it with this knife and you see these deba knives they they're like a chisel and this side is like a straight edge it's the best tool i found to scale fluke and flounder these fish with really tightly packed tiny scales and you just run your knife you know, and it's very easy to do. All right, so here is the ingredients for the sriracha glaze. Usually people use honey, but I find maple syrup just a little bit more neutral. And sriracha, obviously, the original, not the imitations. And a dash of extra virgin olive oil. A dash of dark soy. You can use regular soy sauce for this. You just need a little bit of salt. And the juice of maybe half to three quarter of a lime. Start with sriracha. I would say equal parts. 
sriracha to syrup. Oh my god. Well, it smells good. It smells like pancakes. Yeah, it smells like pancake house. Yeah. Not IHOP, I'm talking about OHOP. The original. Yeah, the original. Yeah. That one's been there for how long? Like 50 years? At least. A little bit more. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, I smell it. Oh yeah. It's like the lemon right away. All right. Give it a taste. Good. Mm -hmm. I think a little more acid. Uh, do crazy. And then maybe a little bit more soy sauce. I'm happy. Fluke has no, there's very little fat content, mm -hmm. so your window is very small. It's good. Good? All right. There we go. That's the glaze. Reminds me a little of that hoisin sauce. Mm hmm A little yeah, bit. Yeah, but with a little more kick. I mean, yeah. this is not how it's going to taste like after you roast it. Mm -hmm. It's going to, you know, it's going to caramelize and it's going to get deeper. But it's a pretty quick glaze to put together. So here I have parchment paper on a half cheap tray. And we'll just lay out some lime and thyme. And will this go with the glaze we're making? Probably. Let's see, get an idea here. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to cushion the head. You know, since this side of the fluke is missing, you kind of want to. You know, like you want the whole thing to be even. And you've seen me do this before. All right, so we're just gonna salt the white side. Why do you salt the kosher if the, it's non-iodized? What's the whole point? It's not, but sea salt isn't iodized either. Oh, okay. Kosher salt is, is just the salt that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. um, it has larger crystals, it's not as densely packed, and it's less salty. You could use sea salt, but you need to develop that feel for it. Mm. Like, I know exactly how much salt I'm putting on anything if I'm using kosher salt. If I reach for sea salt, like fine sea salt especially, I'm over-seasoning. So, I would give a thin coating of the glaze on the white side. Whenever you're cooking, you want to try to pack as much flavor as you can. By the way, was this fluke bled okay or? It's bled pretty nice. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, beach fluke. You're putting in that effort for the catch and cook, man. Yeah. I don't have that patience. If I, if I catch a keeper on the beach, I might bleed it for like 10 seconds. Right. Go back to fishing. All right, so now, there, perfect. Try to make sure that everything's on the parchment. Otherwise, you're going to get a little sticky. Especially the edges of the tail. Fish is going to shrink a little too. Now, the salt, black side. And normally I'm using a lot more salt because we have this glaze, um, probably half the salt that I normally use. You wanna get in there. I promise you it will not be over seasoned. It's hard to over season with this it, salt. It really is, especially when you're roasting a whole fluke. Mm -hmm. I don't know what 
why the whole fish with the skin on can take so much more salt than like a piece of filet. Very easy to over season filets. Jackson Pollock. You just want to make sure that, you know, we're getting the inside. So this is the first glaze, and then we'll probably glaze at least once more, if not twice. I have it at 450. I think that that should be the right temperature. The rack is gonna be lower than normal because I don't want this glaze to burn. Okay, there, goes in. Always shut the oven as soon as possible. Every, every second you leave the oven door open, you're losing a ton of heat. The thing I forgot is just some scallion. These are trimmed up. And they'll just serve as garnish. Been about seven minutes. Let's take a look. Oh, not bad. It's looking great. You know, it's, still, it's nowhere near done, but that's good. We don't want it to be done now. Wow, it looks, looks pretty good. I think uh, it should be all right. Give it a little glaze. How do you tell when it's done? Well, you know, you now know. you you can peek right in it. Right. You know, like you can still see that it's that is translucent. Right. So it's definitely not done. But even like in the inside the carcass, yep, it's a little yep. bit. But. Mm. But you know, we're just glazing it. Yeah, I think we're gonna get another glaze in before this fish is done, and it'll just be nice and lacquered. I mean, I might turn the heat up. The last minute. Okay. Make sure you get all the nooks and crannies. And then we're just gonna rotate it 180. Pop it, pop it back in. That's it. Check it on it six minutes. Getting there. I think that's almost done actually. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a final glaze. And then last, let me turn the oven up. Just blast it, right? So you're not even fishing most of this week, right? I mean the weather doesn't look great. Mm -hmm. I might be able to get out once. Let's see what happens. I like to catch a skate. Yeah. I think we gotta do a skate catch and cook. Ooh, that cheek meat. Do you bleed the skate when you catch it too? You know, to be honest, I've only worked on dead skates yeah. and they come in already winged. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, you would have to, not so much bleed as, as soon as you catch it, you gotta cut the wings off. But I need to figure out a way to kill them first because I don't mm. want to cut their wings off while they're still alive. Right, you want to just put them out. Yeah, but I don't know, you know, I I have to look into this. So 500 now, two, two more minutes. You are recording. that's done especially after we rest it mm, that looks great the thing is like the sriracha it, it burns off like yeah you know like it like like it becomes less hard mm -hmm. for sure all right buddy all right buddy Hmm, nice work, man. It fits. Perfectly. Yeah, I mean, it's a good looking fish. By the way, I knew this plate was gonna fit a fish up to 21 and a half inches, so I made yeah, sure to catch one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a custom catch. Mm -hmm. Some of the scallion. 
These are just uh, daikon radish sprouts. And you see in my other videos, I use these a lot. They have pretty good flavor. They're a little bit peppery and they go good with all kinds of seafood. And I dress this with just a tiny bit of lime juice. And that's it. I'm gonna clean the rim of that plate a little bit. I always clean your plates. That is, uh, that is your fluke. That's your sriracha glazed fluke. Oh, actually, hang on. One second, Mark. Finally, just a little dash of extra virgin olive oil. You know, looking a little bit dry, you can always gloss it up a little bit. And that's it. Right, I mean, it's pretty good, right? As you're a fluke, that's right. You dominate the animal. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, look at that! Look at how it just comes off the bone like that. Excellent. It's good. Excellent. The flesh is perfect. Nice. Mmm. Nice. Look at that. I mean, you know, it's a small window, but if you hit it, it's very juicy. It's very juicy. And and it's, you know, this It doesn't fish, even taste like a fluke. I mean, this thing was caught, bled out, iced down, mm -hmm. and we let it rest in the fridge for a day and a half. Yeah. And then we, we roasted it, so. All right. Well, thanks again, Cuz. Bye. Okay, and there's a still photo of the fluke and thanks again to my cousin Mark he caught the fish filmed the catch and filmed the cooking so in any case if you enjoyed this please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos